Welcome back to the Botanist Garden Club. I'm Pam. And I'm Wendy. And we're so glad to be here today. We are, as every Thursday, we bring you a new episode of the Garden Club. And this week, we are focusing on ding, 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 <laughs> my faves. Wendy's faves. Yeah. You know what? We actually, years ago, thought we would love to show everybody what we use in our garden, what we love in our garden. Mm -hmm. And that's how the faves came about. Right. And each year, it gets kind of competitive, you know? It does, rather. <laughs> Wendy accuses me of being slightly competitive competitive and stealing all the good faves, but <laughs> that's actually not true. No. Uh, we, we There's so many great ones to choose from, yeah. and you have, I must say, chosen some really great ones well, this season. Well, thank you very much. Veitch's Blue was my first choice, mm -hmm. and I have grown that for years in my garden, actually. Right. And it's in an area where it's at the front of the yard, mm -hmm. and it doesn't get much you know, care, let's say. Yeah. So the, the soil there isn't as good, it gets a lot of full sun, mm -hmm. and in the end of the summer, I'm not watering it as much as I should. And you know what? It always looks amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And of course, I love Econops because as, as garden viewers will know, garden club viewers will know, uh, I'm a beekeeper along with yes. Elka. So any plant that is attracting bees is, you know, top on my list and it's definitely one of those. Absolutely. Yeah. And at the summertime and when it's in its height of glory and there's, mm -hmm. you know, five or six balls on that sort of big plant coming up, the bees are all over it. Mm -hmm. And you know, I kind of like it too because you can cut it and use it as a cut flower. It lasts mm -hmm. anywhere from 10 to 14 days. Yeah. And that's a big bang that, for that the is, buck. Yeah, it's, it's one of a florist's favorites. In fact, Elka mentioned that too. She loved using that when she had her flower shop in Munich because it is one that lasts a really long time and it retains that purpley blue color yes. for a very long time. Yeah. You can also use it as a dried flower as well. It's mm -hmm. wonderful. So very versatile yeah. and it's hardy too. I know, zone three to eight, which mm -hmm. is fantastic. And it's not, uh, it's deer resistant. We don't want to say it's completely deer proof. Nothing mm -hmm. is when they're very hungry, but it's all sort of spiky and they don't like that. So yeah. that's another, I think a really wonderful treat. And that full sun drought tolerant, how, Im that's important in our gardens yeah. nowadays. We yeah. just have to have something like that. Exactly. In exactly. those areas. Now we've talked a lot about a, a flowering plant, but you've chosen one this season that really isn't known for its flowers. It does produce flowers, yeah. but it's more a foliage plant. Yeah, Heucarella sweet tea. Mm -hmm. And you know, you mentioned earlier that it actually looks like tea in its various stages of brewing. Yes. You know, a little bit lighter on some yeah. of the leaves, a little mm -hmm. darker towards the center, mm -hmm. all shades of oranges and browns and yellows. Yeah. It is so pretty and it's all about the leaves. It has mm -hmm. a small flowering uh, rice, uh, ricine mm -hmm. that comes up, ricine yes. that comes mm -hmm. up, has little white flowers on it, I believe they are. And it looks amazing in the garden, yeah. and especially planted next to lime green. Really sets yes. off those oranges. Yeah, like a heuchera citronella. Yes, that would be Something a perfect like accompaniment. Now, plant. this is more a, a shade plant, correct? I mean, yeah. you could probably grow it in a sunny spot, but it does prefer partial to full shade. So adding color to a shady area with a lighter toned foliage plant like this oh, is yeah. a really it great idea. So I think what's kind of fun about it too, I have it in areas in my garden that are sort of dappled sunlight, mm -hmm. so they would be considered partial shade. Right. And what is wonderful is when the sun hits them, it's it's like jewel tones. It, it's right. quite lovely. So I think sometimes some of the, the plants might get lost in the shade, but this one does not. It's, mm -hmm. it's quite lovely. It really stands out in that dappled sunlight mm -hmm. or in the full shade. Yeah. And you talk about your garden with the dappled sunlight. Um, Wendy has a really wonderful garden. Pretty much her front yard <laughs> is her garden. She yeah. doesn't have a lot of grass, or you do have a little bit. Just you a, a hammock little, there, but yeah. it's, and there's some very tall trees in her, her yard, and you have some lovely pathways. And one of the yeah. things that you've got growing along one of your pathways is one of your faves this year. Yes, the Fox, Phlox mm -hmm. Subulata Candy Stripe. Yeah. It is so beautiful. What I love about it is it started off as a small little bear root mm -hmm. and then it spread and I've got it tripping over the pathways and I actually had to sort of pull it back because it naturalizes so beautifully in mm -hmm. my garden and it, the little foliage is quite lovely it's very small yeah it is also deer resistant mm -hmm. it is in the springtime and the summer full of the pink and white flowers that mm -hmm. it's known for yeah. and they last a long time yeah. like it just goes from what is sort of one stream to the next right and you know you've got to have cover like that, ground cover like that, that actually shines and has floral attributes mm -hmm. to it too. Yes. And one of the interesting aspects when you talk about ground covers like a Phlox subulata is you can also grow them in containers. In fact, you mm -hmm. can grow any plant in a container. But this one is a great one to, as you say, sort Spill of fill, fill in and, f and fall over. Mm -hmm. Often when we're thinking of containers, we're always thinking of those, you know, those vertical, vertical yes, plants so that true. are growing upwards. But what about covering the soil, providing some natural, you know, cover yes. for the 
well and also making it look pretty. This one is a perfect choice for that or yes. a window box or something like that. And the beauty of it is when you do an annual that's a, sort of a ground cover and spills over, mm -hmm. you have to do it every year. Yeah. With the Phlox Subulata Candy Stripe, you can plant it once and just allow it to continue to grow year mm -hmm. after year in that container. Yeah. And it is also a three to eight, I believe, yes. which yeah. makes it really hardy and good to grow in most areas in Canada, a mm -hmm. lot of areas in Canada. Mm -hmm. So I love that one. Yeah. 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 And I think my last one is something yeah. very interesting. Yes. Platycotton Grandiflorus mm -hmm. Fairy Snow. Okay, a huge name. <laughs> but all you have to remember is, I think actually it's called the Balloon Flower That's plant, right. And That's a common a name. Common name. Mm -hmm. And it is so cool because the, the branches, the stems come up mm -hmm. and they reveal these beautiful big balloon flowers mm -hmm. on them and then they pop open. And it's so cool. Wouldn't that be yeah. great for kids or grandkids to grow? Absolutely. That's the fun thing, too, is to get your, your kids, your grandchildren involved mm -hmm. in gardening. And if they can see a plant that does something interesting and fun, like a balloon that sort of pops open, then it, it, it piques their interest, Absolutely. gets them excited about mm -hmm. it. It's very easy to grow. It's yes. hardy to zone four to eight. And, and loves full sun, yeah. which we all have places like that in our garden that it'll grow in. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not a short plant. It's got a little bit of height to it as well, so mm -hmm. you can put some things in front of it. It and sort of let it stand out in the behind like that. Right. And the color of this one is white, but mm -hmm. when it opens up, you're going to see these little veins of purple inside. Yeah. So that right. kind of makes it a little more interesting as well. Yeah. Well, you've you've got some really interesting well, and you. fun choices. I'm rather <laughs> jealous <Yes. laughs> that I didn't pick them myself. Yeah. But uh, I hope that you will try some of these plants in your garden. And in fact, we're going to maybe give you that opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, if you're a regular Botanist Garden Club viewer, you know that each week, we always love to give things away, mm -hmm. and we ask you a question and ask you to answer that. So this week's question is, which of Wendy's faves lasts as a cut flower for 10 to 14 days? Mm -hmm. So send the answer to that question to gardenclub at botanist.com, and we're going to draw how many winners? We're going to draw four winners, mm -hmm. and each of those people will receive one of my faves. Ooh, what? I know. What will it be? <laughs> I think any one of them is great. I mean, they're all hardy to pretty much anywhere in Canada, yeah, so yeah. Uh, your chances are pretty darn good that you will receive this spring one of Wendy's faves, and then perhaps it'll become one of your faves. I'm sure it will. Trust me on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again for joining us in the Botanist Garden Club. As every week, we have so much fun. Yes, we do. Uh, and we love all of the responses we get. Please do feel free to post your pictures of, of things that we've done or, or talked about in the Garden Club on our Facebook page. Page. Send us your emails. We read every single one of them and we certainly do enjoy hearing from you. We sure do. Thank you so much for joining us again. We hope to see you again next week. Bye for now. Bye for now. Bye.